Hi, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to ACC's College Week alumni panel. Um, we have gathered four of our recent alumni, um, and we're going to ask them a few questions about their college experience. So let's jump right in. And we're going to ask everyone to introduce themselves by telling us your name, what college you're attending, what major you're pursuing, any activities you're involved in at school, and why you chose the path that you did. So um, Josie, if you'd like to get us started. All right, so my name is Josie All, I'm a class of ACC's 2020 COVID class. Um, I go to the University of Wisconsin Platteville, which is just in the southwest corner of Wisconsin. Um, I'm currently majoring in business administration and management, and I play golf, and so that is a big reason why I chose to go to that school. Um, not only did I love just the atmosphere and the vibe of it when I went to visit my brother who also goes here, but um, I met the golf coach and a couple of the golf girls and um, I really just decided that this was the place that I wanted to continue my career while not only building my own uh, golf game, but helping the team at this school can continue to build their own team and you know, be a part of the history of the golf team here. That's awesome. Ken? Hi, I'm Ken Hiltonbrand. I'm part of ACC's class of uh, 2019, almost said 2020. Um, I'm currently going to NIU and I'm pursuing a degree in uh, computer science. So. Great. Brianna? Hello, I'm Brianna Boyd and I am also the class of 2020. Um, I also go to NIU, Northern Illinois University, and my major is currently art, specifically illustration. Um, and I chose to go to NIU because I knew for a fact I wanted to stay close to home um, and this isn't that far. Um, and also NIU, even though it's not an art school, they have a very strong art program, which I always knew for sure I wanted to major in it. So it was immediately on my top list. That's great. And then Grant. Okay. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Grant Goral. I'm a member of the class of 2019. And like two of the other people on the Zoom call, I also go to NIU. So we're very Husky heavy today. Um, I'm majoring in political science and history with a minor in economics. Um, I do quite a bit around campus, but the two big things that I really enjoy are uh, my McKern Fellowship and my Honors Fellowship. Um, and I really came to NIU because uh, like Brianna said, I wanted to be closer to home. Uh, even though I thought I wanted to go out of state, I very much enjoy that. Uh, and I wanted to be able to utilize uh, my close to home connections to be able to help me improve, uh, you know, my resume and then hopefully get some bigger, better internships. That's great. Thank you guys for sharing that. We're excited to have you all here. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and ask each student some individual questions, give us a little more information about um, their experience in applying for college and at college and stuff. So we're going to go back to Josie Alm. Um, Josie, did you know you always wanted to be a collegiate af athlete? And if not, when and how did you know? Um, so I kind of went back and forth, especially around my junior year, um, or I guess before my junior year, just because golf for me was kind of new compared to the rest of my playing field. And so I was really limited on kind of my choices. Of course, my number one would be, oh, I want to you know, go to D1, UW-Madison, you know, um, Nebraska, something like that. But um, once I kind of started to get more in touch with my team at ACC, since we are such a small tight knit community, um, playing with, you know, four or five girls, I realized that that's the kind of team that I really thrive with. And so when I started doing my research and I eventually made it downstate um, for ACC and I started to see how my career could really take off um, and just how much I love to enjoy it and everything. Um, I started researching schools that had just a little bit of a smaller team that I could start to make a difference in and immediately get playing time and um, be able to just kind of uh, help the progress of that team that I found UW Platteville. And so I kind of realized like, okay, if this is, if I'm going to play sports in college, I would love to, you know, play in a, in a college where I could actually be, you know, on the team and a strong member and be a leader by my second or third year. So. That's awesome. It's clear you put a lot of thought into it and it seems like your hard work is paying off. So that's yeah. great when your hard work pays off that way. Um, Follow-up question to that, Josie, do you have any specific advice for students who are interested in playing a sport at college at the varsity level? Yes, absolutely. So 
My main advice would be it's never too early to start. I know that, you know, it might be stressful, especially um, for juniors and seniors who are kind of thinking about it, um, but it's really good as a freshman or a sophomore to start to um, just kind of think about that very early. And even if you're like me, you didn't realize that you wanted to play golf and, or any sport you play until you were a junior or a senior, like that's totally an option too. And you can always walk on, there's so many different options, but um, yeah, that's my advice just to think about it and also just to make connections and don't be afraid to contact the coach. And um, there's so many more options than you initially think that, you know, are on your plate. So I think that just doing your research and keeping an open mind is a really good idea. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I think you have a unique experience, you know, you know, working with both obviously the college aspect, finding the right fit, but also finding the right fit with, you know, your team and, and within, within your athletics. So that's great. Um, Ken, we're going to turn to you and um, you also have a unique experience because you started at a, a community college before you went on to NIU. So our first question for you would be what made you decide to start at Wabonzi versus starting at a four year school right off the bat? Um, well, the decision to go to Wabonzi, there were a, a few different ones, but the, um, the main, main one was finance. Uh, I've got a, a few numbers here. The, uh, the um, cost per credit hour at, at uh, Wabonzi is about 138 versus um, uh, 348 at NIU, uh, anywhere from 400 to 1,000 per credit hour at UIUC. And then uh, for non-residents at Purdue, um, it's around 600. Uh, and that doesn't, uh, that doesn't account for like what major you're pursuing. So it could be more or less. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was also close to home. so. I mean, choosing from community colleges, Wabonzi was, it was closer than College of DuPage or Elgin Community College or Joliet Junior College, which would have been a hike. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, so it was, it was cheap. It was comparatively close and it has a pretty good academic record. Um, the, uh, the CS program there, I mean, my experience was pretty good. Um, I, I'm a little behind at NIU as far as CS classes go, but I mean, so I've got a little bit of catching up to do in that department, but every single one of the classes that I had at NIU, or sorry, at, and every single one of the classes that I had at Wabonzi transferred to NIU. So that's, that's also really, uh, really nice. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that, and they have a pretty good like track record with, you know, colleges in the area. So Purdue, U of I, um, and NIU. So it, it was pretty much, it, like at first it was finances and then I realized it, like they've got good connections with the colleges that I'm looking at to go to after so yeah and for those of you out there listening who don't know what CS is what does CS stand for oh shoot sorry uh CS uh is computer science no that's okay that's what I that's what I figured but just in case anyone else wasn't sure <laughs> mm -hmm. that's clarify that and then you also got a scholarship to go to Wabonzi yes yes I did um I, I got yeah, their uh, Gustafson yeah. scholarship so it, it was a it, it's a leadership scholarship so if you do a lot of service in your community um they consider you they'll uh the way I got it was they had a, a few interviews and uh me and Jonas Sabolski both got uh got that scholarship from our class so that's great and hey, a, a full ride is, you know, saves you a lot of money as well. So that's great. Definitely. The only thing it didn't cover was uh, books and then I think lab fees, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah. So. Um, so to go along with that then, so now you're at NIU. So can you tell us a little bit about the process for applying to a four-year school as a transfer student? Yeah, it's, um, I was kind of a little behind the eight ball with it. I, I would, I did it a little late, but, um, I, I was considering schools in kind of in the fall and there were two main ones that I, that I was considering going to those two being U of I and, uh, Purdue both cause they have really good engineering programs. And, um, but I mean, I also considered NIU cause my uncle graduated there with a, a computer science degree. So it was definitely, uh, definitely on, on my mind, uh, when applying. Um, 
So I, I applied for FAFSA and then in December, like mid December is when they open up the transfer applications. And that's kind of like a nationwide thing. So um, mid December and then the early decision deadline, I believe was January 5th. And then regular decision, regular decision deadline was February 5th. You can, you can apply after that, but I, I don't think it's guaranteed. I don't think you're uh, guaranteed to be considered after that date. So. Did you feel like that process was harder, easier, or about the same as a process of applying right after high school? Um, I would say it's a little more, it was a little more stressful, I think, because I was already, you know, two years into an academic career and I wasn't sure if I was going to get in because, I mean, a lot of this, or the schools definitely do have, uh, like competitive engineering programs. Uh, luckily for NIU, if you apply and you have above a certain GPA, I think it was like 3.5 or 3.8, um, then you're guaranteed admission, especially as a transfer student, I believe. So uh, that definitely helped. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, after you apply, then it's kind of just waiting for a decision. Uh, something I would recommend though, is looking for scholarships if you, if you are transferring. Uh, if you look for scholarships, then, I mean, if you apply to as many as you can find, the worst they can say is no. So uh, that's definitely another thing to uh, to look for. That's good advice because the scholarships for transfer students, sometimes there are some that are available to a transfer student that might not be available as a first time, you know, student as well. So that's really great. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to you, Brianna. Um, to start with, what was your transition like as you started college moving, you know, going from the high school side of things to the college side of things? Um, so first of all, of course, my experience, I feel like was different from a large majority just because I did go to my first uh, two semesters of college in the middle of COVID. Um, so that was of course different. I still chose to live on campus um, just because as an art student, it's just, it was a little impossible to do it completely online because there's projects that are too big to do in a, at home or in a dorm room or uh, you need to come in to turn stuff in. So for my, uh, for my like academic path, that made sense. But it was certainly odd because not only did I have to kind of adjust to the normal like adjustments of like homesickness and knowing no body and having to like uh, meet new people and also online school, which was still fairly new to me. Um, so that was a lot. But um, as I said, uh, to this year, though, has transitioned to in person. Um, and I almost kind of feel like I'm a freshman all over again, <laughs> just because now I actually have to travel to school and things like that. Um, so all of those were things I had to adjust to. But the more I got comfortable uh, the more I started to really enjoy it and really feel like I could take take advantage of what college has to offer, but it definitely was an adjustment for sure. Well, I think you answered part of my next question in this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, were there any pleasant surprises or unexpected challenges, cough, cough, COVID, <laughs> um, <laughs> that came up when you started school oh, that yeah. you haven't already talked about? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Like um, COVID definitely was an unexpected challenge. Uh, and as I kind of said, yeah, online school was the biggest struggle. Um, one I kind of touched on, but didn't really talk about is because everyone was online, there was like nobody really out and about on campus. So I, I really only made like one or two friends uh, last year, which could get kind of lonely just because there's nothing going on and no one there to talk to when you were stressed out. Um, but this year is already getting better. Um, another on a, like a pleasant surprise, I guess, was I personally was one I didn't know how much I'd enjoy being independent, um, just because I was someone I was very, very anxious and daunt. It was very daunting to me to be all by myself because uh, I've lived with, you know, obviously family with, with most of my life. But um, a surprise was really, I really came to enjoy it because it's kind of fun to, learn how you like to do things and you can make your own schedules and find just your ebb and flow um, through life. And it's just, that's, that was very nice and I enjoy it. No, thank you for sharing that experience. I definitely 
personally can relate, but that's something, you know, I don't always know we talk enough about of just the transition itself into college. You know, you're moving away from family or living potentially with strangers, you're meeting new friends. There's just a lot of aspects to that. So, you know, I'm glad that you were able to speak to that and that you've had a positive experience working through all of those transitions. So that's great. Um, and Grant, so our first question for you is, how did your extracurricular involvement at ACC impact your involvement at NIU? Yeah, so I would say my extracurriculars at ACC uh, played a really important role because even once you get in um, to school, and especially when I got here to NIU, I was able to use a lot of my extracurricular activities like NHS, um, student ambassadors, even Quiz Bowl, uh, a lot of that knowledge that I was able to bring um, was useful for some of the clubs that I wanted to join here on campus. Um, but specifically, NHS and student ambassadors uh, gave me this ability to plan different events, to uh, gain valuable experience in public speaking. Uh, and so when I wanted to apply for some fellowships here that were able to give me some good scholarship money, uh, I was able to use those experiences and write about them and, and convey those to the people interviewing me. Um, and they were pleased to have that because some of the responsibilities you take on um, are responsibilities that you can have in your high school uh, extracurricular activities. And that's, that's important because I know a lot of people try to not necessarily downplay the importance of high school activities, but I think a lot of people don't want to psych you out thinking that if you didn't get involved, uh, that you can't join anything. And I, that's not the case. You can still join if you are limited in your pool of extracurriculars. But as long as you can convey that passion, convey your ability and, and skills that you gain from that, a lot of clubs and activities and even professional organizations want to have you. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I mean, you were so involved at ACC and you'd think it, you know, was important to you. And then it sounds like you're just as involved, you know, on campus too. So being able to use that moving forward is great. Um, our next question is, uh, are you planning on continuing your education at the graduate level? And if so, um, did that or how did that impact your decision for where you wanted to go for your undergrad or if it did? Yeah, so I, I definitely want to go to graduate school. My goal is to go to law school and I'm sure a lot of the students on here will probably know that law school um, is very expensive. And so uh, I knew that when I picked a state school like NIU, um, especially being in a local community, I knew I would be able to get scholarships because I had family members go here that it would keep my costs down. And I'm you know proud to say that at the end of my four years here next year, I'll have paid less than $1,000 for a four-year degree um, through my scholarships. And that's, that's really good. That's, you know, $1,000, it's not chump change, but compared to what I could pay um, at maybe an out-of-state school, uh, that, that really made up the difference. And so knowing that I can save a lot of that money um, when I go to law school and be able to pay for that and not have to worry so much about working on top of textbooks and getting my work done, uh, that, that played a huge part in my decision to come here to NIU. Um, and also the faculty as well. Uh, a lot of, I, I did my research a little bit um, on the professors that I was going to have here at NIU and a lot of them have connections um, from where they got their PhDs to law schools that I wanna go to. And a lot of the political science faculty actually have law degrees themselves. And so by looking at that, I knew what uh, faculty to take classes with, which faculty to approach. Um, because like for high school, letters of recommendation are just as important, if not more important in uh, college when you wanna get into a, a graduate program. So for me, being able to, to make those connections, build that relationship um, like you do with your, your teachers at ACC, build that relationship with my professors here, um, gets me on the right path to be able to get to the law school that I want to get into, so yeah. That's great. And that speaks to a huge point too. I think you said it perfectly of just using your resources and using the networks that you have. So, you know, being at ACC, like sure we're a smaller high school compared to some in the area, but that provides you kind of a tight knit, you know, group of resources. So you're able to kind of use that, but then once you get into your bigger pool, use those skills to, to network and do your research with who, you know, you're taking classes with now too. So that's great. And then we have a question for everybody. Um, so we'll do just round robin so everyone can answer this. Um, if you could give high school seniors any piece of advice about applying to college or scholarships or choosing on where to go, what would you, what piece of advice would you give them? And we can just start with Josie. <laughs> um, 
I would say my biggest piece of advice is to start early, kind of like what I said um, before, but also just know that there's a scholarship out there for anything. Um, there's different uh, websites, there's different organizations that will that want to give you money. There's people, there's donors, there's so many funds that go into putting people in America like through school, through college. So um, not only apply for as many scholarships as you can, I know somebody else mentioned that the worst that could happen is that you get turned down. Just go and apply for everything. Um, another great just idea is I know that um, it's probably super popular, but Common App and um, you know completing your FAFSA, the more information that you know, and not that you know you're not just replying or I'm sorry, uh, relying on your parents for like the more that you know, the easier it is going to be for you to fill out everything um, to the best of your ability. So um, really doing that, and I think that the last piece of advice um, just kind of goes for college in general. Like Donna said, when you go to college, it's you are kind of on your own, and not saying that you can't call your parents or your friends or grandma and grandpa anytime, but kind of getting into that mindset of you know forming good habits while you're still in high school, so then you can go and rely on those in college. So you're not just in a completely new atmosphere, and you all of a sudden have to form a bunch of new habits and have. All, you know, the way of the world um, just falling on you. So I think that, you know, making good habits, starting early, um, learning how to be independent, especially just with filling out stuff for college, um, it's all gonna help you in the long run, so. Well said. <laughs> Ken? Um, I've got a couple things written down. Um, so I would say like, start looking at colleges early. Um, I know it's kind of a little, little late, now comparatively but uh i mean look at look at colleges and then apply to all of them at like any any place that you think you might have a like a good experience or any like apply to as many places as you can that you think would be worthwhile um i mean because like we said before the worst they can say is no and then another thing too, apply for fafsa as soon as you can after october 1st like just take a day sit down with your parents um, you know, because you're going to need some of the information that they probably only they know. I, I doubt uh, I doubt most of the seniors would know uh, what their parents' social security numbers are. <laughs> so um, that and tax returns are another another thing as well. But um, yeah, so FAFSA is definitely important to complete. Um, and then, like like we said on here, uh, look for as many scholarships as, as you can and apply to all of them. And you know see what you can get. And another important thing to do when, when applying is to communi with, communicate with the counselors because getting your transcripts um, to the colleges that you're applying to is important because that, that'll help them, you know, determine what scholarships you're eligible for, whether or not they're gonna admit you. Um, so getting this done now and not in May uh, is probably better. <laughs> um, and then uh, a few things to consider when choosing what college to go to in the end. Uh, would be to consider finances. Um, that's definitely something to consider. There's somebody I know who was cons like trying to choose between going to uh, U of I for with a like a full ride scholarship or going to uh, Milwaukee School of Engineering, which is a little more expensive than U of I, uh, but they they weren't going to give her much. Um, I mean, she ended up cho choosing to go to U of I. Who get that? I mean, like I said, they gave her like a full ride scholarship. Uh, so it's definitely. Um, something to, to have like not it shouldn't be the the um the linchpin on which you choose which college to go to i mean there should there are other factors can, to consider um but it's definitely something that's important to consider then uh i mean as brianna said uh living situations you know you might be uh like door or uh, rooming with a stranger in a dorm so that's like if you don't want to do that then maybe a college that's a little closer and that ties into my next point is distance um, if, if you're in Illinois and you're choosing to go to a college in say California or Texas, that's one heck of a drive. I mean, so if, if, you know, something goes terribly, terribly wrong and your parents need to, you know, come and help you, if like you're a few hours away is a lot easier to manage than like 15 or 17 hours away. So that's again, another thing to consider. And then, um, because I mean, then you're closer to your support network. So if you if you really need help, then you can get it. And then uh, another thing too is what you're comfortable with. I mean, personally, I would go for something that challenges you, something that um, 
uh, one of the reasons I wanted to go to the uh, like Purdue, U of I, NIU is because they all have really good engineering programs, some better than others, but it, I was, um, one of the main things that I was looking for in the college is to be challenged academically, something that would push me to my limits. And I think I found that at NIU, so I'm kind of happy with that, but it's definitely different for everyone. So definitely consider that when you're choosing what college to go to. I mean, I know some have a reputation for uh, partying and whatnot, and I, I wouldn't re necessarily recommend uh, like choosing a school based on that alone. But um, I mean, if you want like a late, more laid back atmosphere, that's definitely something, I mean, not the partying part, but it's something to consider, <laughs> so. We always say, if you want to party, you can probably find one anywhere you go. So that it is there if you are looking for it, but it's about finding, like you said, it's just about finding the right fit, the school that meets your financial needs, your social needs, your academic needs, all of that. So well, well said, thank you for sharing. Brianna? I know like I'm just kind of like a broken record, but biggest advice is definitely scholarships. Apply early, apply to all of them that are open to you. Um, it just it's free money <laughs> take the free money as much as you can seriously um and something to go along with that too is look whatever school you're considering going to look to see if they have either a scholarship database just for their school or if they give out like uh application scholarships um like for example for my grades i got was able to get their merit scholarship program and that helps a lot with my expenses um, so check to see if the college you want to go to has those sorts of things because um, they can be a lot of help and save you a lot of time uh, finding other scholarships if your own school is giving you that money. Um, and then something else I have is, uh, like Josie said, like form good habits now um, and specifically form good uh, self-care habits um, because um, school can be stressful, high school and college, college just kind of adds on more. So you want to learn now how to make sure, you know, you uh, obviously everything's not going to be perfect, but getting enough sleep, making sure you're eating the right things, making sure you have days where you get to just rest and not think about school um, because burnout is real. Burnout is not fun. So to form those habits to keep yourself away from that are very important now so that you can carry them on to here college when things get a bit harder. Oh, I love that. That's a really, really good point that I don't think we talk enough about, to be honest. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So thank you. And then Grant. One big thing I would say is uh, not that you shouldn't pay attention in all your other classes at ACC, but your English classes um, where you're, you're practicing your writing. Writing is, at least for me, and I know for a lot of my friends who are STEM majors, writing is such a huge component of the wide range of things you can do in college for applying for scholarships. Um, I'm going to show my nerdiness right here. I'm a huge C-SPAN fan. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know, that's basically just watching the politicians talk on, on the whole floor of the House or Senate. I took that, put it into a scholarship application, and they gave me like $1,500 for it. So whatever your hobbies are, if you're a good writer, you can usually get a scholarship for it. And you can also turn that around and put it on an application for something because it's interesting. People want interesting people. And if you can convey that through your writing, uh, you can get into a program. Writing is such an important part, not just for academics, but for so much more and refine those skills while you're in high school, because that freshman year when you go in and you want to apply for um, programs that maybe you need to apply for your freshman year um, so that you can be in them throughout college, um, you want to have that leg up on other students because there's only a limited pool of resources and you need to show that you really want it and you want it the most um, and writing helps you do that. My second thing is don't discount state schools. Um, I was dead set on leaving the state of Illinois. I was like, I'm going far away. I wanna be out of here. And things did not work out the way they were supposed to. I decided I wanted to come to NIU and this is the best place to come for me. And I could not think that I made the, I, I made an amazing decision to come here. I know I would not have gotten the opportunities at other bigger schools um, if, if I had gone there. Coming to NIU, I had uh, a couple of local connections and I was able to use those and use my skills 
to now next summer, I'm going to be a congressional intern in DC and NIU is going to pay for it. So use your connections. And, and I know I wouldn't have gotten that if I had gone to a bigger school out of state. Um, so be aware of, of the, the schools near you. Do research on the programs that they offer, because maybe if it is an out of state school, that's totally fine too. Um, look at the, the things they offer for your major. If you're a math major, maybe there's internships that that specific school offers because they're near a laboratory or something like that. Um, those are really helpful because not only is that important to your college experience, but that experience will carry it with you when you go to get a job. Jobs love to see that and internships love to see that professional experience on your applications. And if you're good at writing and you can convey those experiences, that's even better. No, that's, I mean, you're so right. And I think that you touched on a point that is important too of, you know, maybe initially you had a different, you know, plan, you know, you had a different like path that you thought, and then you changed that plan, you changed your path and it's just not, if not more, you know, successful for you. So, you know, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay, you know, to, to, to pivot, you know, in certain situations and, and then really embrace all of that because it can lead you somewhere absolutely amazing like it has for you. So that's it's, a really- It's good okay to not get into your first choice. And it's okay to not get into your second choice or even your third choice. As long as you go somewhere that you're happy where you are, um, that's, that's what matters. Yeah, no, I love that. That's such a good point. Well, I think that those are all of our questions. Um, you guys did such a great job of answering them all. And I, I can, well, I think I can speak for Mrs. Fro and I, but I am so glad to see all you guys again. <laughs> you know, the last year, especially, I feel like we don't get to see anybody. And so having you guys all take the time, you know, to sit down with us tonight and, and answer our questions for our ACC current students, um, I know we really, really appreciate it. So. Thank you for taking the time. Um, and we're, we're proud of you guys. I love hearing about where you guys are at and you guys are all, you know, doing great things. And I can't wait to continue to hear, you know, the great things that you guys are doing. Yes, just to watch Sorry, I didn't mean to ask you guys. Thank you. Yeah, letting us kind of share our knowledge because it feels good, yeah. <laughs> Just to pick you up, back off of um, what Mrs. Pearl said, we are so proud of all of you and, um, you know, a great way for you guys to give back to the ACC community and where you came from. And like you said, Josie, share your knowledge and keep doing the great things you're doing. And anytime you need anything, we are here for you guys. And yeah, just keep being great people and doing great things and taking advantage of all those opportunities and change the world. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, right? <laughs> we'll try. We'll certainly try. <laughs> Well, thank you guys all so much. We appreciate it.